when something big is coming, like the first grandchild in the family, or a looming trip to Disney World, or the release of a new iPhone, whatever it may be, when something big is coming, there is this sense of expectation in, in the, the media, and uh, oftentimes our uh, Instagram feed or Facebook feed starts to kind of show all these advertisements to get us all worked up about this big new thing that's coming. And if it's really big, it, it starts to kind of dominate our thinking and we begin to struggle to make it through the day without daydreaming a little bit about what it's going to be like when it finally comes. This is the environment that is surrounding St. John the Baptist in our gospel. After spending time with him, people are getting excited about what he's preaching about, and we hear it, I love it, in our gospel today, all these people coming up saying, what should we do? The Pharisees come. What should we do? The tax collectors come. What should we do? The, you know, uh, the might as well say the sandal makers show up. What should we do in order to get ready? The bakers come. What should we do? Start making cakes, you know. All these people asking, what should we do? The gospel says, now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. There is this great enthusiasm and eagerness surrounding John the Baptist. And the more I think about that sentiment welling up in the hearts of people, the more I wonder how often we experience that kind of eager expectation when it comes to Christ. I know we experience it with other things, but do we experience it in our relationship with Christ? Like, did anyone today coming to Mass think to themselves, I can't wait to encounter the Lord in the word proclaimed and in, in the Eucharist that we're receiving? And maybe so, and it's wonderful. But how often do we do that during the day? How often do we get up in the morning and say to ourselves, I can't wait to encounter the Lord today? How often do we go to work thinking, I wonder how the Lord will surprise me today at my workplace? How often uh, do we come home from work saying to ourselves, I can't wait to see the Lord present in my family? How often, I wonder, do we experience that same eager expectation to encounter Christ in our daily lives? And I have to say that my initial reaction is, Maybe not so often. I'm not sure that we go through our days with that eager anticipation of seeing him or encountering him or meeting him in prayer. I'm not sure that our lives revolve around that expectation and longing for his presence. Now, maybe you all are much holier than I am and I'm just projecting my own lack of faith upon you. But I, I do think there is work for us to do to really want to see the Lord in our daily lives. And yet, and I think this is significant, yet we do expect something. We do expect in our daily lives something to happen. We have this almost hidden expectation that there is something waiting for us in every day, something that will be great, something that will be unexpected, something that will uh, give us a sense of happiness or a sense of joy throughout the day. In fact, it's a sign that something is wrong if we don't have that kind of expectation. For example, if we're suffering from extreme depression, that expectation is numbed and sometimes we don't have the energy to even face the day. But there is something in us that expects something to happen. An Italian poet, Cesare Pavese, wrote, has anyone promised us anything? Then why do we expect something? It's a very interesting line. Like, at what point uh, as, as children did we hear the voice of God saying, I promise you that I will show you something? For, for many of us, it's a natural desire that comes out. It's not because somebody told us 
that, that we should expect something. It's because it's already in there. It's part of our nature to expect that something great will happen, to expect that our lives have meaning and purpose. And it's easy, I think, to give in to the struggle of disappointment. I think it's easy in our culture today to allow disappointment to kind of smother our expectation that there is something great waiting for us. And so all the more reason for us to live from this expectation and to learn to fight through that disappointment, to hold on to the hope that there is something in this world that is worth living for. There's something in this world that is responding to us. I mean, honestly, none of us want to give up on happiness. Nobody wants to give up on the possibility of joy. Nobody wants to say, well, today I didn't experience happiness, and so forget it. I'm going to give up. Nobody wants to go through the day and say, well, I didn't experience intimacy with God today, and so I'm just going to give up on it because it's not possible. But sometimes when we get barraged by disappointment after disappointment when we feel ourselves getting frustrated that we're not getting what we want. It's easy to say, well, forget it. I'm just going to give up and settle for something less. But that's not how the Lord wants us to live. That's why this season of Advent is given to us every single year so that we can wake up that expectation in our hearts, to go looking for happiness again, to trust that the Lord enters into our reality and responds to us in a personal way. And so we can't allow that expectation to get lost amidst all the other things that are happening in our lives. And these days, it's, it's wonderful because we're given a natural reminder of this every morning. If you're up early enough to see the sunrise, uh, my, uh, the chapel in my house faces east, so uh, when, when I go up there to pray, oftentimes the sun is rising. And if you look at the sun in the morning, especially if there are some clouds uh, on the horizon, you'll see a color that looks very similar to this. It's a color of promise that says to us, the light is coming. As we emerge from the darkness, the light is coming. And what a beautiful natural reminder for us. For those who are struggling with uh, despair and anxiety, the Lord says to us, even naturally, the light is coming. For those who are suffering the loss of a loved one and who are caught up in grief, the Lord says to us, the light is coming. For those who are battered down by the challenges of life, for those who are weighed down with suffering and sickness, the Lord says to us personally, the light is coming for you. The Lord Jesus is coming for you every day, every moment of every day, every second of every day. The light is coming so that you can know that the Lord has not abandoned you. He's coming to join you in the struggle so that the light will not be overcome by darkness, but so that we will know that he is here to respond to that expectation in our hearts. Friends, that expectation, that promise, is only fulfilled in Jesus, only in him. And so let's pray that as we continue in this season of Advent, that when we feel ourselves getting to that point of wanting to just kind of give up, when we feel ourselves getting to the point of giving in to the darkness, let's remember that the light is coming. God is soon to arrive in our midst. Let's ask the Lord to open our eyes and to receive the one who can't wait to come to us.